Let's take this opportunity to demonstrate how we can add CGI elements and completely blend them into our environment using Blender. Now there are four steps to this process. First, you have to solve the camera in 3D, which basically maps the camera movement of the shot to the 3D camera. Then you have to place the appropriate elements in the solved scene. Then you match the lighting. And finally, you composite it all together. Let's go. You can download the footage from the link in the description. Now, in order to solve the camera motion, we go into Motion Tracking Workspace and we import our footage. For the motion model, we select the location and rotation because there is not much perspective shift and the camera does not move closer to the subject for things to change scale. The affine model is used if the tracked points change shape over time. We then click on Detect Features to automatically detect trackable points. And then we can track forward. After that is done, we filter tracks based on the tracking error to remove problematic track points. Then we select the track points that did not track all the way through and might give us solve errors and we delete them. And then we click on solve camera motion. We have an average solve error of 0.3 pixels, which is really good. Anything below one pixel is great. We're happy with it. We set the footage as background and click set up tracking scene so that all the track points are transferred over to the 3D scene. Now we select at least three track points and use them to define our ground plane. Then selecting a point in the center to set as the origin. Now if we play the footage, we can see that the cube sticks to the ground without sliding. This is a perfect track. If we then select a point and add a cube on it, we can see that it sticks perfectly. Congratulations, we have a good camera solve. This gives us immense control and this is great. Let's crack on. Let's bring our robot model as a subject to match the lighting of the 3D scene to our footage. It has a glossy surface and it helps in matching the lighting a bit better. To set the basic lighting, we start with taking a screen grab from the footage and setting it up as an HDRI. I admit it's a bit hacky way to do it, but it works. At least in setting the basic lighting up and we can push on from there. Since this is not a true HDRI, we need to tweak it to match the look. Increasing the strength sets up the basic lighting. We augment this by adding a sun lamp coming from the same direction as the light in the footage. If we draw a line between the object and its corresponding shadow, we can make a guess on where the direction of the light is. In this case, it's at about 1 o'clock position from the camera's perspective. We can then scale the ground plane and roughly recreate the ground and walls in 3D. We do this to get appropriate shadows for our CG objects by making a shadow catcher. It sounds like a superhero character, doesn't it? We can use the track markers to guide us where these walls are supposed to exist in the 3D space. So right around these markers will be the front wall. We extrude the edges to match the window sill and extrude it further in the local x-axis to make it a shelf. If we set the viewport display to wire, we can see our footage underneath. We can then continue recreating the main structure. Hmm. Let's now think what is the story of this person. So he looks like a rebel resting in his base of operations, like he's hiding some radioactive material in his fridge. Interesting. Let's bring in a fridge. The models are free and linked in the description, so you can freely follow along as you like. What is also completely free is my email newsletter to give you some more value apart from YouTube videos. I write it myself and share my tips and tricks, workflows, assets and snippets from the books that I'm currently reading. So it's an ultra filtrate of my learning processes and I think it will help you as well. Okay, on to the scene again. Let's place the fridge model on the side of the wall. To give some depth to the composition, we need to add something that goes from the foreground to the midground. Let it be a small robot playing with a ball. Now in order to make correct shadows on the robot, we need to close down this space from the right side to avoid light coming from that direction. This is a pre-animated robot with a walk cycle. Using assets like these and building a library of your own assets speeds up your workflow quite a lot, so I always recommend building a resource library. Our rebel friend here needs a communication channel with his friends. So we place a military grade radio to send and receive communications. Now what is a rebel without a weapon? Let's arrange it for our friend. This massive shotgun with first aid equipment seems like a suitable weapon of choice. We place it here alongside our friend. 
Let's think what else can happen in an apocalypse. There is a possibility of zombies lurking around, I suppose. So we can add in a guitar, which is actually a flamethrower. This should take care of all the zombies out there. Let's also add in a water tower outside. Now as a foreground element that we will eventually blur out, but it does give some depth to the scene, we add a spider sentinel robot ready for orders. On the wall, our friend has pictures of his heroes from the past. The Polaroids give a little bit more worn out effect to the scene. Now when the radio is being jammed, our friend has a redundancy for communication. It's an old Soviet era phone using landlines. To add in more character, we add some graffiti to the wall. This graffiti plane is shrink wrapped to the wall so that we can move it around without having it detach from the wall. All right, let's now set up a rigid body simulation for the ball that the small robot is training with. We add a sphere and make it an active rigid body. Make the floor as a passive rigid body and shape as mesh. We set the friction at 0.25 and bounciness at 0.65. Next, we need to give the ball an initial push for it to roll towards the midground. We can do this by setting up a cube as an animated passive rigid body. This collision throws the ball in the direction of the fridge. The ball is without texture, so let's do it now. It's a simple texture with a metallic shader mixed with emissive shader with a wave texture as a factor. It's a little bit too simple, so let's add some roughness. We can do this by putting down a noise texture and plugging it in the roughness channel of the metallic shader. Adjusting the fall off by using a color ramp, we have our ball texture. Plot twist, this ball is actually an EMP grenade. Go figure. Now we also need some radar monitoring of the airspace of our base. So let's add some radar monitoring equipment right here with closed circuit camera control system. The fridge is yellow colored, which I don't think really goes well with the surrounding. We can give it somewhat of a military color. I think all these elements cover all the basic equipment that a rebel would need. Now before we render, we need to set up render layers. We will render each CG element as a separate render layer to have good control in the compositing stage. For this we make separate collections for each CG element, and we enable only the ones that we want in the render layer. So shadow catcher will be in every render layer since we need shadows of the object along with itself. Importantly, in the fridge layer, we also enable the flying drone layer and set it as indirect only. This renders only the shadow and reflections of the drone on the fridge surface. We do this for all layers that receive the drone shadow. In the compositor, all the render layers are set to render out in separate folders. Once all of it is rendered as separate render layers, it's time to composite it all together in After Effects. We import our base footage and render layers in the After Effects composition. Let's arrange it from the backmost element to the frontmost element. Now if you play blast this and the render layers appear out of sync with the backplate, it might be due to frame rate mismatch. This footage is 25 frames per second, whereas After Effects reads an image sequence at 24 frames per second by default. So right click, Interpret footage, main, and set the frame rate at 25 frames per second. Now the first thing we need to do is to rotoscope out this front staircase and put it on top of the render layers because it is a foreground element. We'll duplicate the backplate and place it on top, and we can try rotoscoping it using the After Effects rotoscope tool. But the problem is, it gives unreliable and often unusable results. What we will use is another built-in tool in the After Effects, which is called Mocha CC. And it is a good tool to do this sort of stuff. We apply it as an effect onto the layer in the After Effects, and then open it. Using a pen tool, we trace the margins of the staircase that we need to roto out. We give all the edges a little bit of roundedness so it's not too sharp. After the tracking is done, we save this tracking data and go back into the After Effects. In the Matte section, we view Matte to see if the data has been transferred over, which it indeed has. We can then apply Matte and create a mask. Here we can feather out the mask a little and decrease mask expansion to cover for the feathering. Perfect, let's now adjust the render layers. Here we add a levels effect and hue saturation. We adjust the values to integrate it with the foreground colors. 
We also need to mask the foreground blur. For this we add a camera lens blur effect and eyeball the blur values with the staircase. This looks great. Now the next bit is interesting. The little robot on the right moves from the shade into the sunlight and therefore this change in lighting condition needs to reflect on it as well. And this is important for proper integration. In order to do this, we add an adjustment layer and pre-compose it with our mini bot render layer. Here we'll add the same hue saturation, levels and camera lens blur effect and we try and match these values to the surroundings. We'll then duplicate this adjustment layer and move the playhead to where the robot is in the sunlight. We adjust all the parameters for this layer again and match it to the surroundings. Now we'll have a smooth transition from one adjustment layer to the other by setting keyframes for the opacity of these layers. The foreground adjustment progressively decreases in the opacity and the midground adjustment progressively increases as the robot moves closer and closer to the sunlight. I think this looks fine. We can then copy the same layers for the EMP grenade since it undergoes the same change in lighting. We have the same three effects on the next render layers and tweak them a little for better integration. The renders from the render engine do come out a bit sharp, so adjusting the camera lens blur effect gels it with the backplate. Now to make the scene a little bit fuller, we render out a mist pass from Blender. We set the transfer mode to screen and adjust the influence using the levels adjustment to make it fall within the midground. We add a small amount of vignette and a color correction layer to give it a cohesive look. On top of it, we add a stock video of subtle dust through a light shaft and set the transfer mode to screen. This tiny movement adds more life into the scene. With this done, we finally have our composite. With a little sound design, this is the final sequence. Unauthorized equipment detected. Please produce ID while I scan the area. Commencing scan. Radioactive source identified. You are in violation of code 435B. I sincerely hope you learned something, and if you did, please leave a like, and if you enjoyed it, do consider subscribing. I will see you soon in the next one. Farewell.